The Tu-22M3 is an aircraft that is frequently overlooked in favor of its larger counterpart, the Tu-160. Nevertheless, it is challenging to describe a 42-meter combat aircraft as discrete, given that it has a maximum speed of 2,300 kilometers per hour and a takeoff weight of up to 126 tons. Western sources maintain that the Russian aerospace forces retain a minimum of 55 Tu-22 M3 bombers, with a portion of them having been converted to the more sophisticated Tu-22 M3M version. The Tu-22 M3 has a long development history. The Tu-22 M3 is a more sophisticated derivative of the Tu-22M and Tu-22 M2 supersonic variable geometry aircraft from the 1960s and 1970s, preceded by the experimental Tu-22 M1. These bombers could be classified as strategic due to their capacity to provide in-flight refueling and their ability to reach a diverse range of global regions, including the United States. This capability was demonstrated in 1976 when a Tu-22 M2 completed a 7,000 km one-way flight with refueling. NATO and its allies strongly opposed the serial production of Tu-22 M2 bombers with aerial refueling capabilities, referring to them as strategic bombers. The USSR removed the refueling devices from these aircraft in order to reduce tensions, although they could be installed if necessary. The Tu-22M3, which succeeded the Tu-22M2, was similarly unwelcome to Cold War adversaries. The NK-25 engines, which were a precursor to the NK-32 engines used in the Tu-160, were more potent and modern when they were introduced to service in the 1980s. Electronic control systems were implemented in these engines. The air intakes were redesigned and the aircraft's electrical systems were modernized. Due to this extensive modernization, the bomber's weight was reduced by nearly three tons, resulting in superior performance despite the heavier engines. The Tu-22M3 was officially inducted in March 1989 amidst the turmoil in the Soviet military-industrial complex during the perestroika era. Gorbachev's reforms had a catastrophic effect on high-tech industries. The Tu-22M3 was a successful production run, with a minimum of 250 units, or 265 to 268, depending on the source, built before production ceased under Yeltsin's pro-Western regime in 1993, despite the turmoil. An experimental Tu-22M4 was developed in 1990 and was outfitted with NK-32 engines. However, it was never produced. The M3 version functioned as a transitional element between the variable geometry aircraft of the 1960s and 1970s and the modern bombers that were capable of deploying precision weapons. It is capable of transporting a payload of up to 24 tons, 12 tons standard, which includes long-range air-to-ground missiles like the KH-15 and KH-22. A 23mm rear cannon that was remotely operated was used to provide defensive capabilities. A four-person crew was responsible for operating the cockpit, which was equipped with advanced avionics. The bomber was capable of flying at a speed of 930 to 2,300 kilometers per hour and had a flight range of up to 6,800 kilometers. It can fly 4,500 to 5,000 kilometers with a 12-ton cargo. The wings were engineered to optimize flight performance in a diverse array of conditions with a variable sweep angle ranging from 20 to 65 degrees. Despite the challenges of the 1990s and the subsequent recovery, the M3 remained a critical element of Russian long-range aviation. The Soviet Union's dissolution resulted in the transfer of certain aircraft to Ukraine and Belarus. From 2002 to 2006, Ukraine retired its M3 fleet, while Belarus transferred its aircraft to Russia. By the 2010s, Russia was the sole fleet operator of the M3, although not all aircraft were operational. An effort was made to modernize the fleet and re-establish flight worthiness by incorporating concepts from the Tu-22 M4 project. In 2018, the first M3M was converted in Kazan, and there are plans to upgrade an additional 30 aircraft. Foreign surveillance efforts are complicated by the external similarity between the M3 and the enhanced M3M, and the program's current status is classified. During Russia's 2015 campaign against international militants in Syria, the M3 was reintroduced into combat.
This was preceded by its final combat missions, which were conducted during the 2008 five-day conflict with Georgia. The M3 has been actively used in special military operations since 2022, with a primary focus on the deployment of missiles such as the KH-32, which replaced the old KH-22. In Mariupol, it conducted a conventional bombardment raid on enemy positions, despite the air defense threat, in one instance. What is the M3's future? Given the M3M modifications, it appears that the aircraft has several years of service remaining. However, the production of new M3 stopped in 1993 and is expected not to be restarted. Within the next decade, it is expected that the remaining fleet of over 50 aircraft will be reduced to 30 enhanced M3Ms. The Kazan Aviation Facility's primary objectives are the production of new Tu-160 M2 models and the development of the next-generation PAC-DA bomber. At present, there is no replacement for the Tu-22 M3. Now. Do you think Russia should concentrate on PACDA 5th generation bombers? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel. Please also take membership in our channel to encourage us.